So I'm very happy to welcome uh, the first speaker, Linda Steerer. Linda's from IVL, and she's going to talk about a panel survey that they've done, which involves decision-making in an organizational context. So Linda, you're very welcome, and I'm going to give the, the, give the word to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Uh, thank you. Uh, so today I will present the transport purchases role for sustainable transport. And this is part of the uh, transport purchasing panel, Transportisköpspanelen, uh, which is a long-term strategic uh, collaboration between IVL, Swedish Environmental Research Institute, uh, Chalmers, and University of Gothenburg. And it started already in 2010. And since 2012, we have carried out every second year, a large survey that we send out to uh, uh, um, companies buying in transports uh, and with different focus areas, uh, collaboration with forward agents, environmental issues, decision-making agreements, transport volumes and transport industries in the future are uh, focus areas for this survey. So we have a lot of information from Swedish companies uh, wool sales company and uh, manufacturing companies uh, with more than 100 uh, employees. <coughs> uh, and this transport uh, procurement panel uh, investigates the process of transport procurement among Swedish companies and we also try to influence the development in a positive direction. Um, and why do we choose to focus on transport procurement? Well, um, we believe that the transport purchasing companies will play a major role in the transport sector's transformation into sustainability. And therefore, the road towards sustainable transport starts with the purchase decision. It's when the companies decide uh, what kind of transport they would like that really affect the whole transport system. Uh, when they put their service demands on time restraints and so on, uh, uh, that uh, make um, affect the whole system in to a large extent. <coughs> So, um, <coughs> uh, I would like to show you this one, uh, this report on fossil-free uh, vehicle traffic. And here you can see different scenarios. And the, this work we've been carried out are uh, related to the blue fields here, development of society and transport systems. Uh, but it also uh, has some larger effects on the other parts, because if the transport purchase a demand for example, new technologies or biofuels, it will also uh, develop these part of the, of the, um, of the field. So it's important to focus on the procurement. So, uh, um, so the question here is, if the transport buyers require sustainable transport at the moment, uh, we have a f uh, some questions in the server related to, to uh, environmental issues. And we have one question uh, where the respondents should weight the distribution between four different demands on transport services according to their importance. And um, as I said, we have carried out this survey three times. So we have results from 2012, 14, and 16. But we also, for this question, have a result from 2003 when the uh, University of Gothenburg carried out a similar survey. Um, so we ask the, uh, the transport buying companies this question and they answer for 2016 is like this. Price is still very important, uh, punctuality more important than transport time and the environmental uh, efficiency uh, is rated rather low, only 10%. <coughs> Um, and uh, when we first carried out this survey in 2012 and when we presented the result, we often asked the audience what they thought the result would be for 2003. And I know that m many of you have already seen this, this figure, so I will not ask you today. But uh, when people guessed back then, they said that they believed that price was uh, higher rated in 2003, and perhaps the punctuality was a little bit lower, and environmental efficiency was lower. But sometimes there was one person in the audience raising his or her hand and telling us that 
they think nothing ha has changed since 2003. And actually, uh, that is the case. It's no big differences <coughs> and no significant differences between the years. But there are some results indicating that the, there is actually a positive uh, development. Uh, we ask the companies if they pay a higher price for transport uh, services to reduce environmental impact. And in 2012, uh, it was only 3% of the companies that indicated that they are actually buying more to get a better sustainable transport solution. And they paid 3% more. But now uh, it has changed a little bit. In 2014, it was 9%, and in 2016, uh, it was uh, 21%. So th we can see a uh, positive development there. And also, when it comes to uh, demand on environmental issues, uh, 2016, many companies put demand on uh, different aspects like trucks with high environmental standard. Uh, they offer sustainability and environmental reporting and eco services and intermodal transportation, and also that they use uh, alternative fuel. Back in 2012, that was not, not nothing that the most companies w were interested in at all, but now it's more interested in. And also uh, uh, that the provider works with social um, responsibility. So uh, this is the development, what we have seen so far. Uh, but I want to stress that there are, of course, many companies that work really, really hard with uh, sustainable transport uh, services. But in general, for most of these companies, it's not a strategic question. It's not a question at all, actually. 26% uh, of the companies indicated here that, that uh, environmental efficiency it has no importance whatsoever, 0%, 26%. So we need a change in order to reach our environmental and, um, and uh, climate goals, objectives. <coughs> and um, we want to make uh, transport purchase to a strategic issue in order to reach these, uh, these uh, objectives. <coughs> So, uh, but how can you demand more from the companies is the question we often ask ourselves in, in our work. They, are, uh, they meet the legal requirements and some of them goes, uh, go beyond the requirements. Uh, so what can we do in order to, to uh, um, make them want to buy sustainable transports? Well, clear political instruments. And rules are necessary to increase the rate of change. Um, <coughs> and the company that do, do more than necessary need to be acknowledged and compensate. And the company that do nothing need to do more. <coughs> and um, one uh, rather unexpected uh, outcome from uh, the last question in the survey uh, what the company think will have the largest effect on the transport industry in the future is that also the companies, the transport buying companies, are expecting new regulations uh, and legal requirements from the politicians. They're not only expecting it, they also uh, has nothing against it as long as they are fair, clear, long term and within the EU regulation, uh, as most ship, uh, Swedish companies have international uh, transport. Um, so, uh, this question, they have uh, between, I think, like 12 sticking options, uh, what will have the largest effect. And when they indicated, the, uh, when they rated these uh, factors, three of the most important one, ones were legislation, higher taxes, and higher uh, fuel price. So all related to, to uh, political decisions and not to their, their own um, business. <coughs> so before I end my presentation, I also want to show you uh, the least important factors that the transport buyer think will affect the transport industry in the future. Any ideas what these could be? The least important factors for the business. Well, ironically and rather surprising, they think that uh, 
The least important ones are transport purchase adjusted time requirement and service requirements. And that's actually exactly what I've been talking about the last almost 15 minutes here. Uh, how important it is to, uh, for them to, to change their behavior uh, and to, to require sustainable transports. But uh, so my conclusion here is that uh, there are different actors uh, that play important roles in uh, the transition to sustainable transport, but most of them are pointing in other direction than to themselves. The politicians think that the transport industry should take care of this problem by themselves. The transport purchaser think it's the, the politicians. The transport providers think it's the transport purchaser that should demand uh, sustainable transport. So uh, it's not really clear who's responsible for this. So the conclusion is that we're all responsible for, uh, for working with sustainable transport in order to reach our environmental and um, climate objectives. Thank you.